Hello everyone, me again. Uh, so I noticed something uh, today that I wanted to uh, do a video about because I wanted to highlight a couple of things and it's only going to be a relatively short video but it allows me to highlight a few things. One of them is a feature that's on the Ubuntu ISO that I don't think many people know about. That's one thing. And the second thing is uh, what do you do when you find something wrong if you're testing out Ubuntu ISO images? And so those are the two things I want to talk about. So let's just grab my browser, uh, that one. And uh, you can see here, uh, we're using the uh, ISO test tracker as I keep using, iso.qa.ubuntu.com. And uh, let me go into do not disturb mode. That's you. Uh, <laughs> new feature. Um, and one of the tests I wanted to talk about down here is when I look at focal daily which is where we've been going all the time and we've only mostly been focusing on uh, the flavors but I want to pick specifically Ubuntu desktop because that's what I've got on a USB key and it helps to illustrate the uh, the thing I want to show normally we look at these tests up the top here the mandatory tests that have to be passed before we can say an ISO image is good and that it could be released but there's some more down here and there's even more further down and the one I wanted to show you is this one here free software only and uh, this is uh, an option that you can choose in the Ubuntu ISO at boot time that restricts the software that's installed on the machine to only Free and open source software. Let me show you how you do it. It tells you how on the page there, but I'll just show you on the laptop. So, as always, I'm going to boot the laptop up, and in the USB drive, I've got the latest daily image of Ubuntu 2004. Now, as I always say, 2004 is not out yet, uh, it's not ready. It's a good idea to test it, but I wouldn't run it on a production environment although I do run it in a production environment on my main laptop. Right, now I have to press space here. That's the, the button to trigger accessibility. So if someone had accessibility needs and needed to turn on the accessibility features, at the point the system boots, they just hit the space bar to bring up this menu. Uh, and it's well documented what the keys they need to press are. Now, the option I want to show you is down the bottom, F6. If I press F6, Right down the bottom is an option called free software only, and that's the option I'm talking about. If we press enter on there, and then I think escape closes that menu, um, and we've still got this entry highlighted at the top. If I just press enter, it'll start booting the ISO image. And if I install, having chosen that other option of free software only, it will only install free software so it will not install non what has been specified as non free software now you might be thinking well everything's free software well yes but there's a bit of a sliding scale and i'll come back to this in just a minute because this actually highlights a second thing and that is this you can see here the little spinny you may recall that a few times um when I've been doing this testing, we've seen a little thing on the screen that's doing a, a file system check of the USB key, and we're not seeing that. And I just wanted to highlight, well, what do you do when you notice something like that? And before I've said, you know, you could go and search for bugs, or you could file a bug. And that's certainly true. But I went down a different path today, and I thought I'd share with you the different path I went down to show you how what you could do if you discovered something and you're not sure whether it's a bug or not because right now i can't see the text but i don't know if it's there it might be black text on a black background or whether there's something broken or it's just taking too long to boot um, it does boot eventually but it takes a long time so let me show you what i did i went onto irc and the ubuntu desktop team have an irc channel on freenode called Ubuntu hyphen desktop. You can see here, hopefully you can read this. 
I asked the question, is it known that today's daily takes an age to boot? And the reason I say that is because it's still booting, and this is unusual. Like, once you've, once you've done this a few times, you'll know how long too long is, right? Uh, so I said, it sits at the spinner for quite a long, a bit longer than usual. And Jibble, who's a QA person working on the desktop team, Jean-Baptiste, said, yes, it's the FSCK without the feedback. So that's the, the checker, the thing that's checking the USB key. Uh, and he knows that that's an issue because he keeps an eye on the bug reports and he does QA and he gets feedback. For so I just happen to have come into this IRC channel where the desktop team sits. And it, as I said, it's Ubuntu desktop. I just asked them and I said, I'm not seeing the checker. And sure enough, uh, Jean-Baptiste has highlighted a number of bugs which are related to this. So all I need to do is just go and have a look at these bugs see if they describe the problem that I'm seeing. So this one here, in a theme flickers OEM logo on password entry. I'm not seeing that, so it's not that one. A spinner theme doesn't support FSCK progress messages. Well, I think that's what I'm seeing because I'm not seeing the, the little um, messages that tell me the percentage is checked. And so here, somebody else has already filed the bug so all I need to do is just click log in and then the little button appears here and I just click me too. And that helps raise the heat of a bug. You see this little thing over here on the right. I've not mentioned this before. This is the bug heat. And this gets pushed up as more duplicates of bugs are found and more people comment and more people click the little me too. And just clicking me too is enough to increase that bug heat. And so when the desktop team are triaging bugs and examining bugs that they need to prioritize, they can look at the relative heat of those bugs and that will help them to prioritize their work because there's far more bugs than they could ever possibly uh, work on in a day. And so they have to prioritize them, which ones are most important, which ones are causing a problem. And this is causing a problem, obviously, because it's taking a long time and the user might be fooled into thinking it's not working. And so that's considered a high priority bug. And you can see uh, Sebastian, who works on the desktop team as well, and he's in that IRC channel as well, has triaged this bug a couple of hours ago, decided it's high priority. And so that's why you can see the importance high here. And so someone will get to that probably quite soon. So an ISO image that I download in a couple of days will probably be fixed, I'm, I'm guessing. I, I, I imagine this is a priority. So anyway, it has actually booted. Now I just wanted to highlight how it is possible to, you know, interact with human beings. You don't have to just file bugs. You can talk to people and, you know, understand whether you need to file a bug or not. And the Ubuntu desktop team are mostly there during the European and American working hours during the week. Uh, but also there's some of the desktop team who work, who live in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, uh, in Australasia and so they're on different time zones so don't be too worried if you're in that channel at a time that's not you know nine to five in Europe there might be people in there who can answer your questions but I thought that was worth highlighting uh, the thing I actually wanted to mention about this uh, this ISO image though remember I said I booted with the free software only option uh, which was detailed in this test case where I pressed F6 on the boot screen and then I chose free software only. Let's see what the, the result of that is. And this is one of the tests we have to do because it's an option on the on the um, ISO. And so we should test it. So let's do that. Let's do an install. It's technically looks exactly the same as a normal install. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you heard that little jingle i've mentioned it a couple of times and um i was chatting to martin Wimpress about it and he clarified that actually that was supposed to be there all the time um and indeed the uh that little jingle is there in some older releases of ubuntu but at some point it broke and stopped playing and so um they fixed it in 2004 and now it makes that noise so it was a surprise to me because i haven't heard it for a long time um, but it turns out it was just a bug and they fixed it. Some kind of race condition that meant it wasn't playing the audio. 
So I'm just while I'm talking, uh, getting through the installer so that we can um, get the thing installed. And while it's installing, I'll show you a couple of the pages that describe what this feature is. So now that it's installing, it's wiping out whatever I had on the hard drive and putting 2004 with the free software only option ticked. Now, let's go and have a look at Wikipedia. So in the past, there was a flavor of Ubuntu called Go Ubuntu. Now you can tell by the fact that it's got the Hardy Heron from 2008 and it's got the old font, the old Ubuntu uh, logo font, that this is from the past. And so this uh, was a flavor of Ubuntu that was created by Canonical because there was call in the community for a version of Ubuntu that had no non-free software on it at all. Like it was all completely free software. And you might be thinking, but surely everything on the CD is free software. Well, it's relative. It depends on who you ask. Um, some people are pragmatic and will allow for things like non-free firmware blobs to enable their wireless card to work or to enable, I don't know, a fingerprint reader or the GPU, like an NVIDIA GPU or something. Some people feel that's okay on a Linux distribution. Others will say, like especially those who work for the Free Software Foundation and who follow the teachings of Richard Stallman, will be uh, resistant to having those kind of things on their system. They want a fully free software system. And so as a result of that, back in 2008, uh, Gobuntu was developed as a, an ISO image that only contained guaranteed free software. And it's tricky because, again, it depends who you ask as to whether something is free software or not. Something that is in the Ubuntu archives, um, we would accept as conforming to some open source license. And I'm not a license expert, I'm not a lawyer. Um, but the way it works is we would accept something in the archive that we consider free software and open source software but debian might not and we pull a lot of packages from debian and so sometimes there's a difference between what we would allow in the archive and what debian would allow in the archive and then there are other distributions which are even more for want of a better word fundamentalist than debian and there are things in debian that those distributions would not allow uh, there's one called GNU Sense, G N E W Sense, which is a derivative of Ubuntu. I don't know if it still exists, um, but that goes even further in removing free software, uh, non free software, from their ISO image to fulfill the requirements of those people who would prefer to have a fully free software desktop. I'm not saying that's a bad thing or that it shouldn't exist, but the fact remains that it's a sliding scale between. You know, you can kind of think of Apple at one end of the scale where it's a almost 100% proprietary operating system at one end. And then at the far other end of the scale is GNU Sense, which is a fully free software implementation. And Ubuntu sits towards one end, that, that free software end, but we're not as free software as GNU Sense. And Gobuntu was a way that we could reach towards that free software only um, option. And so the ISO was made, and it says in the Wikipedia page, it was short-lived, official derivative. And it was short-lived, I think, because uh, people, it wasn't actually that popular. People liked Ubuntu, and they liked the fact they could install Ubuntu and get their wireless working and their GPU working and all their software would install. Uh, at, but they weren't the free software fundamentalists that would only allow free software on their system and so i think uh it failed really because nobody wanted to get involved and contribute to it and help maintain this thing um so yeah there's a little bit about the history on the on the wikipedia page um i think at some point they wanted to call it gnu Ubuntu, but um i don't think richard stallman wanted that oh yes there's another one stallman had previously endorsed gnu sense which is another distribution which is more free software 
Anyway, it's worth a read. Uh, not to be confused, Gobuntu, not to be confused with Gubuntu, which was an internal version of Ubuntu that Google used. So G-O-O -O here means goo, Google. Uh, and this was slightly different. Um, this was actually Ubuntu with a, a light set of modifications on top. So going back to the uh, QA, I've gone through all of this and I've done all the uh, all the steps and it's reaching towards the the end of the the um, install. Uh, it's going through the slideshow and eventually it will say installation complete. And then what I need to do is reboot the system once it's done. So let's switch back to the laptop and see where it's got to. Oh, perfect timing. It, uh, it finished just as I switched to it. Okay, so if I click restart now, uh, it's going to restart and there's another issue towards the end here. Uh, normally it pops up the text that says, uh, please remove the installation media, but you're not seeing that. I think this is related to the issue that we saw filed in bugs. Um, but you don't see that. But if I just press enter now, it will shut down. So I'm going to pull the USB key out and it will reboot into Ubuntu with the free software only option ticked. And while that's booting up, let's go back to the page and see what we have to do next to confirm that that worked. So down here it says you need to log in and then verify that neither restricted nor multiverse archives have been enabled by doing that and then verify that there's no non-free kernel modules uh, on the system so i'm just going to log in and switch back to the laptop and then we'll do that i said this was going to be a short video it almost is So let's go through the usual welcome stuff. Do, 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 done. Right. So, um, oh, you missed all that. Oh, well, I only did the uh, welcome wizard. Okay. So it's installed. And what it asks me to do is grep for restricted and multiverse in etc apt sources.list. So uh, it asks me to type a command and do some. I mean, you can copy and paste this off off the page, but actually, what's easier is there's a GUI for this, uh, and it's software and updates. Uh, it's this one here, and you'll notice what it's asking in the page. Uh, if we look, go back to the uh, the test, it says check to see if there's an entry for restricted or multiverse in the sources. So that's a text file that defines where software comes from on your machine. And you can see here, there is an entry for restricted and an entry for multiverse. So there's four main sections in the Ubuntu archive. Main is the stuff that is supported by Canonical. Uh, there's a commitment from Canonical to support those packages. So that will contain things like the Linux kernel, GNOME shell, Xorg, video drivers, and so on. Basically, everything that's on the ISO is in, is in main universe is the wider commons of software so a lot of the files that uh, packages that are related to the flavors will be in universe so all the kde stuff all the xfce stuff uh, the lxqt budgie you know all the all the various flavors all of their packages are in the universe part of the archive and there's no commitment directly from canonical Historically, there has been no commitment from Canonical to commit to security updates for packages in that, that section of the archive. Restricted is where proprietary drivers go. So things like the NVIDIA driver or drivers firmware for other devices that you might plug into your, your system. And multiverse is stuff which uh, there's... Well, it says software restricted by copyright or legal issues. I think some stuff goes in there if it's if Canonical have an agreement that allows them to distribute the software, but it's not free software, in which case it can't go in main and universe because it's not free software. 
non-free, but Canonical are allowed to distribute it. And so the reason why I've explained those is because you'll notice that these two are not ticked. On a default install of Ubuntu, those are ticked because people will probably want things like the NVIDIA driver, firmware for their wireless, firmware for all kinds of other things they attach to their system. But if you're the kind of person who wants free software only, then you can choose that option at boot time, pressing F6, and this is what you get. Now, that just, rely, that just means the base system only consists of free software. There's nothing stopping you ticking those two boxes and enabling it and then installing non-free software. You could go off to the web and download you know, non-free applications and install them. It's just the base system that you get. You can be confident that you've got only free software on the system. It's also useful for you to determine if all of your devices work with free software drivers. So, for example, if I go up to here and look at Wired, it says Wi-Fi not connected, but if I hit select network, I can see a whole bunch of wireless networks, which means the wireless card in my laptop is serviced by free software drivers. So the other thing that it uh, wants me to do is check for uh, packages that have Linux restricted in the start. So we just do dpackage minus L. So this is going to list Debian packages that are installed that start with Linux hyphen restricted. And there are none. There's one that's listed, but that one that's listed is not installed. The U means if you go up here, desired unknown. There's no known uh, whether anyone's actually asked for it in the past, unknown, and N means not installed. So it's not installed. Nobody asked for it to be installed, and it's not installed, basically, is what that means. And so that's just the check that lets you see if there are non free kernel portions on the system and there aren't so there you go that's my brief introduction to two things the fact that you can install ubuntu as a free software only linux distribution and secondly sometimes it's good to go and speak to human beings on irc in the ubuntu desktop channel just to confirm whether something is or isn't a bug before you go filing a new one in which case you can go to the bug and just hit the me too button confirm the bug in order to raise the priority and allow the team to know that that is a problem. I hope that was helpful. Uh, see you on the next one of these videos. Take care everyone.